Hey guys, we are going to graph a rational function and this example, the graph has a hole in it, okay? So first of all, I wanna show you what these graphs can look like when you're graphing rational functions. This is just a few examples, obviously there's more, but just to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at, okay? So when we do these, we follow some steps. Yes, I love it when math gives us steps, okay? First, we're gonna factor Second, we're going to find our asymptotes and check for holes. Then we're going to find our X and Y intercepts. And then fourth, we are going to figure out the general shape of the graph using our preferred method, which we'll talk about once we get there. Okay. All right. So first thing we're going to do is factor. Okay. I will link a factoring review video in the, the corner if you need it, but I'm just going to straight up tell you right now that this factors to X plus three times x minus 4 over x minus 2 times x plus 3, okay? Now, you might notice, oh, hey, guess what? I love it when this happens, that those x plus 3s can cancel, right? Everything's being multiplied, so those cancel each other out. But how does that affect my graph, right? Well, this is where holes come in, okay? So when you have something that cancels on the top and the bottom, you have on your graph what's called a hole, okay? It's literally a hole in your graph, okay? <laughs> so to figure out exactly where it is, if I were to set x plus 3 equal to 0, I would get x equals negative 3, right? But it's not an asymptote like these guys are that we're going to figure out in a minute. It's just a point, right? So it's going to be an ordered pair where x is negative 3, and I don't know the y yet, but I can figure it out, okay? So to figure it out, I'm gonna take what's left of my function after these cancel and plug in negative three for x, okay? So after those cancel, I'm left with x minus four over x minus two, right? So I'm gonna plug in negative three and see what I get, okay? So I'm gonna have negative three minus four over negative three minus two. Okay, negative three minus four gives me negative seven. Negative three minus two gives me negative five. A negative divided by a negative gives me a positive seven fifths. Okay, don't freak out because it's a fraction. Okay, we can leave it as seven fifths or we can convert it into a mixed number, which is one and two fifths. I kind of like the mixed number. It helps me envision it better. But if you like seven fifths, yo, go with it. Okay, so what does this tell me? This tells me at the point negative three for X and one and two fifths for Y, there is going to be a hole in my graph, okay? And we will represent that in just a minute. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is figure out my vertical asymptotes, okay? So if you've been doing math, which if you're watching this, I'm guessing you have, you know that we do not even mess with zeros in denominators, right? We don't even, okay? So um, a vertical asymptote forms where my denominator would be zero, okay? So to figure it out, if these hadn't canceled, I would set both of these equal to zero. But because those canceled, we know it's not an asymptote, it's a hole and we have it represented already here, okay? But I'm gonna set this x minus two equal to zero, okay? So x minus two equals zero. I would add two to both sides, right? And get X equals two, okay? So that is my vertical asymptote. And I represent that with a dotted line at X equals two, right? So right about here, okay? Now, if you graph this on a graphing calculator, you may not actually see a dotted line. That's how we like to show it when we do it by hand. But on a graphing calculator or something, you'll just see a blank space where the graph approaches but doesn't touch, okay? So my graph will not cross this line. If it does, go back and check some of your work. You probably have a miscalculation somewhere, okay? All right, next is my horizontal or slant asymptote. You will not have both. Guys, I can usually draw brackets, but lately I have been struggling. Anyway, fun side note for you. Okay, for the horizontal and slant asymptote, we follow some rules, okay? 
Now, I we like it when we get rules, right? Like, oh, that's easy. But I want you to know we don't just pull these out of thin air. When I say we, it's not me. That makes me sound smarter than I am. But these aren't just out of thin air, right? There's a reason for them. If you want to know the reason for them, I will link a video in the corner for you, okay? All right, but these have to do with degrees, okay? The highest exponent in our numerator and denominator, okay? So on my numerator, it's two. In my denominator, it's two, right? So if your top degree is greater than the bottom, you don't have a horizontal asymptote, you're gonna check for a slant, okay? If the degrees are equal, like they are in this example, we're going to divide our leading coefficients to get our horizontal asymptote, okay? If the top is less than the bottom, then your horizontal asymptote is y equals zero, okay? All right, like we said, ours are equal here, so we are going to divide our leading coefficients. Your leading coefficient is the number in front of your variable with the highest exponent, okay? Now, here it doesn't really look like there's one, but there's really a one there, right? One x squared. So if I were to divide my leading coefficients, I would get one over one, which simplifies down to just one, right? So my horizontal asymptote is y equals one. And again, we are going to represent this on our graph with a dotted line at y equals one, okay? All right, fun fact. Well, I don't know if this is really fun, but... <laughs> Interesting fact you need to know to graph these is your vertical asymptote, like we already said, will not be crossed, okay? All, but, I was going to say although, which isn't really the right word right here, but your horizontal or slant asymptote, guess what, guys? They can actually be crossed, okay? Now, I know what you might be thinking, because I thought it too. Why do we have them if they can be crossed, right? <laughs> well, let me tell you, even though they can be crossed, they still help us figure out the shape of our graph and help us know what areas our graph is approaching, okay? So they still matter, even though horizontal and slant ones may be crossed, okay? All right, we found our horizontal asymptote. Because there's a horizontal one, I do not have a slant asymptote in this example, okay? All right, we are just plugging along. We're on to our next step x and y intercepts, okay? Let's go ahead and find our x intercepts first. You could have more than one x intercept, okay? You could have none, you know, but you could have one or more. Um, but to find the x intercept, I'm going to set y equal to zero, right? Now I could set this whole thing equal to zero, but then I would end up factoring. These two would cancel, right? And I just end up with this x minus four over x minus two. So that's just what we're going to use, right? So I'm going to have 0 equals x minus 4 over x minus 2, okay? Then I would multiply both sides to get x, sorry, <laughs> to get rid of the fraction, right? So we're multiplying both sides by x minus 2. So I end up with 0 on this side equals x minus 4. Then I would add 4 to both sides and end up with x equals four, right? Now this is not a line like these were, right? This is an ordered pair. When I plugged in zero for y, I got four for x, right? So this is a point on this function's graph, okay? So I know my graph is going to cross right here on the x-axis, and that's the only place it's going to cross the x-axis. All right, the next thing I want to figure out is my y-intercept, okay? To find the y-intercept, I am going to set x equal to zero, okay? Now, we said you could have more than one x-intercept. You will not have more than one y-intercept because this is a function. And if you had more than one, you would not pass the horizontal line test, right? So it wouldn't be a function. So you will have zero or one y-intercept, okay? So... I'm going to set x equal to 0. Again, I'm just using this guy right here, the x minus 4 over x minus 2, okay? So for my y-intercept, we're setting x equal to 0. So I'm going to have y equals 0 minus 4 over 0 minus 2, okay? That'll leave me with negative 4 over negative 2, which will simplify down to just 2, right? So when I plugged in 0 for x, I got 2 for y, okay? All right, I'm feeling pretty good about where I am right now with this graph, okay? So I know my graph is going to cross here. 
okay? And then this is a good time to graph this whole, okay? So I know at negative three, one and two fifths, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? Approximately here. I'm going to draw an open circle, okay? Which represents that there is a hole in my graph right there, okay? All right, from here, this is kind of depending on how many times you've graphed. After you graph a lot of these, you'll probably be able to kind of figure out what this graph is doing, okay? Knowing what you know about asymptotes and functions and things, you'll probably be able to tell, okay, this is gonna go like this on this side and like this over here, right? If you're to the point where you're like, oh yeah, I know that's what it's gonna do, go for it and then check it on your graphing calculator, okay? But if you want to be a bit more exact, a bit more precise, we can go ahead and pick some points, plug them in, and get some ordered pairs, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in three, okay? So if I plug in three, and again, I just need to plug it in for this, okay? Um, I'm going to do three for X. So I'm gonna have three minus four over three minus two, okay? So then I'm gonna have to, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> then I'm gonna end up with three minus four gives me a negative one, and three minus two gives me one. So I end up with negative one, right? So when I plugged in three for X, I got negative one for Y. So I'm gonna go three down one. So that helps me know from this point, my graph is approaching this vertical asymptote that way right? Which can also help me know that that side's going that way, right? Now, if I wanted to, I could plug in a one or a negative seven if I wanted to, but because I have this hole here, that tells me that we're going to be going towards this asymptote that way and up that way. Again, I've graphed a lot of these. If you're not feeling confident of knowing exactly how those are going to go, plug in some more points, plug in one or negative seven and get those ordered pairs, okay? The last thing that can be a good habit to get into is to, once you've graphed this by hand, plug it into a graphing calculator to check yourself, okay? To make sure you're on the right track. Reminding yourself that this doesn't have to be perfect, right? The other thing to note when you are putting this in a graphing calculator or something is that you might not be able to actually see the whole on the graphing calculator unless you like zoom in you like how i'm pretending to zoom in right on my screen so zoom in you still might not see it but if you put in like plug in that ordered pair it'll come up as undefined but it might just not be super obvious to you when you're just looking at the big picture right but if you do a little searching you'll find it there which is why it's a good idea to do these by hand first because the hole might not be very obvious to you if you just plug it in, right? Without doing it by hand first. Okay, I hope this made sense. I will link a playlist with a bunch more examples if you need them. Thanks.